tell you a brutal fact here about television. It's a brutal, brutal world, a very difficult world to live in and a very difficult world to work in, you know. I've worked in it many, many years, but I've been lucky, let me tell you, because I came from a comedy variety theatre background. So I always took it with a huge pinch of salt, you know, the divadom, the saying the last words on screen. I couldn't care less. My bottom line has always been, if you're getting paid, shut up, turn up, be, be grateful, and hopefully they won't fire you. It doesn't always work in that order though, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the problem, of course, that didn't happen for the former daytime TV presenter, uh, Philip Schofield, who's uh, just about to conclude his final uh, part of his castaway thing over on Channel 5. And Philip was very keen to remind us just how popular he was, you know. This was all uh, really put forward as well by his eldest daughter, Molly. Now, Molly, people don't realise, is of course also Philip's PR stroke manager. Quite what she's got to manage remains to be seen as the programme evolves and develops. This was a sort of rehabilitation, but let me tell you this thing. There's a big story going around at the moment with Philip Schofield, and of course he's mentioned it on the programme, that there are so many people he could turn over in television and, you know, expose. Well, news for you, Goldilocks. You can't, you know, your secret has been well hidden for many years. You're lying now and you were lying then. You know, you lied to your wife, you lied to the, the crew around you, and allegedly lied to your co-star, Holly Willoughby. And what's interesting here is that whichever thing he puts out, the only way he could possibly clear any sort of, I don't know what you want to call it, name, you know, moving forward, that sort of thing, would be to have the person in question that seemingly has been either paid off, allegedly, removed out of the limelight, never to be seen again, never done any interviews. If he'd have been allowed to speak, that might have been a little bit more backup. It might have, of course, suppressed some of the more negative headlines. But of course, many people know who were worked with Philip for many years throughout his tenure on BBC Children's Television and of course going through to the adult stuff as well, know that this was an open secret, very firmly stated on international television by none other than the doyen of soaps, that's right, the brilliant Dame Joan Collins, who openly said, well she thought everybody knew that Philip was gay. Interestingly, she was hoofed off that programme, never to be seen again, and apparently Philip has forgiven her. So all of these veiled threats about I could expose this or do that, it won't happen simply because everybody knows in the industry that everybody has far more on Mr. Schofield. What he's hoping is that this will basically win over the audience to say, oh yes, he wasn't too bad or whatever, maybe we should give him another chance. It's going to be a very risky production company that takes a chance on Philip Schofield. And not only that, I would say the problem is the audience have now, frankly, worked him out. And that is a very hard thing to come back from. And for Philip, you know, who's had a very, very, you know, interesting career, a very well-paid career, some might suggest he should do something similar to another disgraced TV presenter, Hugh Edwards, take the money and go off and disappear and enjoy the remaining millions that you have. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? Because if he keeps threatening people, will they now retaliate? Very dangerous ground to move on. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.